name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray as we gathered this morning in front of the first station of the cross. Jesus is condemned to death. My Lord Jesus Christ, you have made this journey to die for me with love unutterable, and I have so many times unworthily abandoned you. But now I love you with my whole heart, and because I love you, I repent sincerely for having ever forever having offended you. Pardon me, my God, and permit me to accompany you on this journey. You go to die for love of me. I wish also, my beloved Redeemer, to die for love of you. My Jesus, I will live and die always, united to you. On this first station, Jesus is condemned to death. St. Alphonsus asks us to consider how Jesus, after being scourged and crowned with thorns, how he was unjustly condemned by Pilate to die on the cross. You know, often when I pray the stations, I find myself getting stuck on this first station, mainly because I start considering how much Jesus suffered in this one particular station. Jesus hearing the words of being charged, condemned to death, considering how he was so violently scourged, considering how he heard the lies of the rulers that brought him to this point. But most of all, hearing those words from the crowd, crucify him, crucify him. Can you even imagine standing in his place, hearing the crowd cry out, crucify him? You know, each wave of the crowd's roar must have been like being struck with the whips during the scourging. It was a lot to bear, yet he did bear it. And he not only bore it, but he took it and he moved forward in silence, relying on his Abba. His suffering is part of the reason I get stuck on this station. But it's also my suffering that I get stuck on this station. That inner voice that I always carry within myself, that finger that constantly points the accusing finger at me, constantly remembering my sin, especially the sins of the past. You know, that voice is very much like these mountains in the background. That voice is always looming over me, screaming out at me, condemn him, crucify him. Yet when I stand in front of this station, it gives me great comfort, knowing that just as the Lord had the courage to stand here in silence, I too, am given the strength to stand in silence in the face of my past and know with surety that God's love and God's great mercy are much greater than anything I could ever do. All I have to do is reach out for that love. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.